Chapter 66 You are now listening to The Chapter of the Architect with DJ Architect. What's going on? Once again, my people, this is your homeboy, DJ Architect. Welcome you guys to Chapter 66. Listen, we have a returning individual from Chapter 64, First Sergeant Mike Marshall back in the studio. First Sergeant. freaking rock. Good to see you once again. It's good to be back. Listen, so apparently you had a bunch of people blowing up your phone. Blowing it up. A lot of prime (laughs) Marines that you knew back in the service that that are saying, oh, great podcast. They loved it. Yeah. but, you know, a couple of corrections that, that need to be Everyone's done. got their own version, so I, I need to correct a couple of things. I told you I was at when I was the last corporal I drove for Admiral Denton. I had mentioned that he was in Sinclair Fleet, the commander in chief of the Atlantic Fleet. Actually, he was a commandant of something called the Naval War College. And what that is is uh, military ranking officers, I forget their ranks, maybe lieutenant colonels, lieutenant commanders, commanders, captains, colonels. And they go to this war college just to talk about, it's like a, a master's degree talking about the bigger picture of war. He was a commandant of that. The thing that I didn't mention that I should have mentioned about Jeremiah Denton was, you know, I, I said he was a POW for seven years. He was actually a POW Carlos for eight years. Uh, this guy, uh, and I didn't know all this when I was driving for him. Uh, Navy Cross, three silver stars, three, five bronze stars. I mean, highly decorated. Uh, after he retired from, you know, he called, he just recently died. He died in 2014. But uh, he, he then became a senator from Alabama. Uh, and he worked in the Senate for several years. Uh, and then he retired. So this guy's life, I mean, I think wow. he was a, a A6 intruder, pilot shot down, eight years POW, uh, highly decorated, uh, becomes the commandant of Naval War College, and then uh, retires and become a senator. Uh, just just an amazing person. Uh, and as driving for him, I, I didn't know all this. The other thing I want to correct is Corporal Gargano. I had mentioned that he was from upstate New York. I got him mixed up with another corporal named Murphy, who also died in Beirut, but he uh, died in Beirut okay. the first time we were there. Right. Uh, Gargano is actually from Quincy, Massachusetts, and we didn't go to his family's house. It was Corporal Murphy's. Uh, and I tell you how Corporal Murphy, uh, I'm a staff sergeant, Carlos. This is the first time going to Beirut. Uh, right before we go in the next day, you, you, the mess decks are open all night to go get coffee and stuff. I, I was on the mess decks. It must have been like 1 o'clock in the morning. Mm-mm. You can't sleep before you're going to go in yeah, you know, to Beirut. Right. So uh, I see this kid uh, sitting there in the mess decks by himself, and he's crying. And I'm like, hey, Mer-. and he was EOD. Hmm. I'm like, what's up? What's up with you? Um, yeah, I just got this letter from my wife. She wants to divorce me. Oh. And, uh, she sent him a picture, Carlos. Wow. I mean, and uh, she had this other guy. And I'm like, who does that? Who does it? You couldn't wait till the guy gets home. And I don't want to give my what I really think of that whole situation. I, I will. <laughs> that is some bullshit. Some that bull. is some bullshit. Oh, my God. Carlos, they didn't have um, uh, iPhones and all that stuff. She sent him a Polaroid picture uh, of her and this guy getting it on, Carlos. You know, that is so and Murphy is selfish. Just, oh, it, it's just... It, it's. And I'm, you know, what can I say to him? I, it's like, hey, I, I'm sorry, but you know, you EOD, yeah, brother. You gotta, and, you gotta be and, focused for and, what we get ready to do. And, and it's yeah. not like you can say to him, hey, let me go and take you out to the bar for some no, beers no. and make you feel better. No, no. you guys are, you gotta Getting stay to go sober in. and focused. You have no right. time to go to the bar. Bigger than shit, Carlos. Um, Israelis have something called cluster bombs. It, it mm-hmm. explodes you know, in the it, air. They detonate and they they shove out. They these spread out grenades. these smaller bodies. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We get there. We get at the airport. I'm always I always talk about pissing. You know, before I attack anything, I'm a piss. <laughs> <laughs> so I got all my gear on, Carlos. I pull to the side of the runway. We had just got there. I am pissing, and you see these little black balls all over the place. Mm. We landed in the middle of this cluster bomb minefield. Wow, field. Didn't know. What does Corporal Murphy do? He's EOD. 
you would think someone with that background and that that uh, training wouldn't touch anything. You know, his goal was supposed to wire it off, you know, set up tape so we can go around it. Right. Goes and picks it up. You think uh, that was almost like a death wish? You know, we don't know. But it, it seemed like it's like uh, it was like a stupid thing to do. Boom. You know, it's quiet. It's first thing in the morning. You know, we do everything first thing. Sun's coming up. And he hit this, this loud explosion. Everyone hits the deck. And it's Murphy. This is the individual whose wife cheated whose wife on him. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. And I, 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 mean, I go know, ahead, go I, ahead. Look, and I, yeah. I don't mean to be disrespectful to him or the family, but right. the training that the Marine Corps gives is is top notch, right? And as an EOD, which is explode explosive uh, ordnance right. uh, individual, he he had to have known that that was uh, an explosive device. Right. Uh, for him to do that was, you know, suicide. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That uh, grenade sliced him. Yeah. It's like somebody took a knife and just sliced him, and yeah. he was dead instantly. So I got Gargano and Murphy mixed up. The other thing I want to correct, Carlos, is uh, Grenada. In the East Coast, when they leave to go on deployment, they leave out of Moorhead City, mm. uh, and uh, you, you, you sell out. Uh, and this is before the, the bombing on the 23rd, so we must have sold out like the 20th or the 21st. I'm in 2nd Battalion, 8th Marines, America's Battalion. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We're sailing out. And you can tell the direction you're going, even though you're not sitting on the bridge. Mm. Because the sun rises the same place right. every day. It's rising uh -huh. over the front of the ship. Uh, halfway, like a couple of days, all of a sudden, and they, don't, they tell Marines shit at the last moment. The sun's coming up on port side. Mm -hmm. So we change directions like, you know, what the hell's going, going on? on? Ladies uh, and gentlemen, port side's the left side of the ship. Right. Yeah. So uh, we're going south mm. instead of going east to go to the Middle East. Right. Uh, then we hear about the Beirut bombing. I'm 2-8. I'm Beirut bombing is 1-8. So in this one deployment, all this stuff is going on. You got Beirut getting just kicked off on the 23rd. We find out. You know, the numbers are coming in, how many people were killed, and we're hitting south. I'm like, why are we going to Beirut to, right. you know, to get get some? Right. Uh, turns out that's when Grenada kicked off. Ah. Reagan's the president. Uh, in Grenada, they got 600 medical students that's been uh, held hostage. They got Cubans there setting up uh, anti-air guns, uh, putting munitions there. They had just assassinated the president of Grenada uh, in a military takeover of the a coup. Island. A coup. So they diverted you guys. They diverted to us Grenada. to go down there, and I found out later that you know Marines are like, yeah, it's Super Bowl, let's go. Mm -hmm. That a lot of the uh, Margaret Thatcher, a lot of the, the Europeans were against us invading Grenada. They sent seven thousand American troops to Grenada. The Marines, the Navy SEALs, eighty second Airborne. Carlos, it was like a movie. Wow. Uh, I mean, it was just, it was, that was actually, going to Beirut the first time wasn't combat, combat. Grenada was like my first, all okay, right, lock yeah. and load, let's Knowing, go. Knowing yeah. uh, you have individuals with armed rifles, RPGs, grenades, right, right. Uh, willingly attacking you. Absolutely. Right. So so we, uh, Beirut's going off, we're going to Grenada, you know, it's kind of confusing. I knew it was serious because this pre Position and ship pull up alongside of us, and we're turning in our old shit and getting new shit, uh, new rifles, yeah, new. That's the first time I had a Kevlar helmet. Before wow. that, we had uh, those Vietnam right. steel pots. Yeah, all of a sudden it's Kevlar helmets. I am like, what year is this? Was eighty three? This is eighty three. This uh -huh. is all. This is within three days. You have twenty wow. third. We landed in Grenada on the twenty fifth. So we uh, we what's going on? Also, you got the Navy SEALs. I didn't know much about the SEALs back then, but they dropped these guys the day of the landing off, and they were supposed to swim in and secure the area. Right. Uh, I didn't find out until later that four of them guys drowned at sea. Wow. So you got the SEALs drowning. Uh, you got, in fact, there was a 17 Americans killed in Grenada. Uh, Cobra pilot uh, shot down, and this is a heroic story. Uh, it was a pilot and a co-pilot. The pilot pulled the co-pilot out. They were both alive initially. The pilot drags his, his co-pilot out. The Cubans see him, kill the pilot who's 
who was saving the co-pilot. Right. Uh, I don't know the gunny's name. I know he was a grunt. They end up uh, discharging or, or getting the Cubans away from him. So the co-pilot lived only because the, the, pilot, the pilot saved, saved his saved life. Wow. But uh, it was just, it was on. I it just, I remember being in a helicopter for hours in a circle and all of a sudden sun comes up and we do this, had everything but the music colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, landing, we get there, we're lock and loaded and we're walking through Grenada. Uh, Mike, could you explain that circular motion that the helicopters were doing? Because uh, the the Amtrak's do it in the ocean. In the ocean, right? And, and really, what what it's meant for is to allocate all the forces to mass State. at one point, right. Right. right? So you have to be in a sitting position for a certain amount of time to let the rest, uh, the remaining forces, allocate. So when they strike, they strike at full force, right? Right. right. And you know the thing about. Grenada, Carlos. Um, it's just it's the first time I've seen the combined arms of 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 the military, Marine Ground Air, Air Ground Task yes, Force. Oh, yeah. it mm-hmm. is just amazing Beautiful. how much force we can put in one place mm-hmm. uh, quickly. Because we just the all of a sudden Grenadians wake up the next day and they got seven thousand American troops walking through their streets. Uh, it is just it's it's amazing the the military might that we have. 80 seconds jumping and we're talking hundreds in fact at some point i'm not sure if it's a week later days later we end up meeting up wow. with the 82nd wow and you know I, i'm not gonna get on the army too much because i have buddies <laughs> army has no discipline man <laughs> i mean they do like you know we do a security stop carlos right. we're facing our board right. you get off the do road the, do the 360 perimeter three harem bones defense right army mm-hmm. security stop helmet comes off Rifle goes up against a tree, and we're looking at these these yahoos like you know. <laughs> it's thank God that we wasn't getting there. Uh, right, attacked a big force attack. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause they they would got their butts killed. They're like, but, uh, hey, uh, might as well go ahead and uh, take out the peanut butter and white bread. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man! And uh, the last thing was Somalia. Uh, the reason we were in Somalia initially because. Uh, there was a civil war going on. There's this guy named Adi trying to take over Somalia. Pa, Carlos, you have not seen poverty. You're like, you know, you go down to TJ, you go down to LA, Skid Row. Pff, you don't know poverty until you see Somalia, Mogadishu. Uh, it rained one day while we were in Somalia, a couple of weeks, and there's rain puddles all over. I saw this woman carrying her baby in that rain puddle. She washed her baby, washed her clothes, and took like empty plastic bottles for drinking water, wow. uh, and moved on. Wow! Uh, it is, uh, it is, it's the poorest. There's dead animals all over the place, like donkeys and goats, and they just they just lay in there. Mike, yeah. now Somalia, uh, this is where when the army came on board this is where this the is movie we left. this we is left. the movie uh, black hawk down black hawk down so uh, ladies and gentlemen just to just to explain and what year was this mike this is uh 92 okay so just to explain <clears throat> before the incidents that happened uh, with the army rangers and delta force as you see it in the movie black hawk down there were Marines on deck prior to the Army getting right, there. Right. Those Marines, you guys were there to set up a security force to provide aid uh, to the population because warlords were taking that aid and, I, and you know, keeping Carlos, it to that's themselves. That's exactly right. The, the people were starving. So we, we go to the Brains. In fact, we went 50 miles inland to a place called Bagladeo, um and to drop off food at these... Uh, um, these centers and they're run by Christian organizations and Muslim organizations and we found out later as soon as we leave the warlords would go to those organizations and take the food from these people and then they would charge them they would charge them for food that we gave them they would make them pay for that food wow. to get it back wow. it was just a but, Somalia is just a bad situation but they didn't have the balls uh, to come and confront the, the Marine Corps but well, that whole thing with Black Hawk down so the Marines you know, I didn't realize how dangerous that place was until mm. we heard all what happened. After what happened we afterwards, left. right? Uh, Carlos, we're out there in the middle of town, and it's it's just a population. There's people everywhere, hundreds of people, and they're coming up all around. Uh, they're you. right next to you. They're right next to you. Right. So they could have, um, 
they could have just killed us at any time. We land out in the middle of town on, on Humvees, laying underneath Humvees, just kind of in these abandoned areas where if they wanted to, they could have just attacked Rushed. us. Now, let me ask you something, Mike. Uh, and I'm not trying to hear, I'm not trying right. to be braggadocious. Uh, th- that's not the reason why I'm asking this question. Right, right. But why all of a sudden when the Marines pulled out and the Army came in that they chose to attack the Army and not the Marines? Well, I, at that Black Hawk Down incident, the, the head warlord there, his name was Adid. Um, I, the Rangers, the reason that they were going into the middle of that town was to... To pick uh, up several uh, they wanted uh, leaders. Leaders, yeah. and, including him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not sure how word... Like word always. There's always... Somalians working on the Air Force base. So, it, you know. They always have uh, somebody, somebody that, that, that'll that give them, hear something. hey, uh, right. they're coming. And yeah. and if you remember the movie, they have signals. They were burning yeah, tires. absolutely. So when those tires are burning, that's the signal and, that the And I recall the there, was a, uh, there was a little boy on the roof with a cell phone, and right. he just put the cell phone to the sky, right. letting the individuals within the the center where they were going, okay, and you got helicopters on. coming toward right. you. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you, you look at these poor countries, but they've been some fighting wars a lot longer than we have. So they don't have all the technical expertise. They don't have Cobras and helicopters and artillery. But they have tactics. They have tactics. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just, if if you saw Black Hawk Down, it is, it's just... Those streets are small. Everything's on top of each other. I'm surprised that anyone survived that those those uh, that attack. I mean, it's just. What rank were you at this time? Uh, uh, I was a gunny. Uh, a gunny. I'm gonna say, Carlos, gunny is the best rank in the Marine Corps. I is that was the a way you feel? Gunny. That's yeah. the way you feel? Yeah, I, even more so than first sergeant and staff sergeant. Why? Why so? Company gunny. When you when you tell a Marine, go talk to the gunny. His all of a sudden, his butt puckered up because <laughs> you don't talk to the gunny to b- go over there and bullshit. You know, you. Um, I would. I was like, I got to tell you this story uh, real quickly. Yeah, uh, so I'm a gunny, and I had just uh, come off uh, training officers at ROTC. So I'm still fire and vinegar. Uh, I uh, I get to the battalion. I, at this time, I'm in Second Battalion, Ninth Marines up here at uh, Camp Pendleton. And uh, they put me with all the, the shitbird companies. At the, the first shitbird company was Golf Company. They put me in Golf Company. It's a bunch of, and they could, just got from deployment. Could so you, could you, knuckleheads. Could you explain to the listeners what a, what, that's a Marine Corps reference, what a shitbird <laughs> means? <laughs> it means they can't, they're not, you can't depend on them to do anything. You can't <laughs> depend on them to be on formation on time. If you send them on a working party, they're going to be somewhere sleeping. Uh, I mean, uh, malingerers, <laughs> yeah, maling- <laughs> lazy. Uh, you, they're supposed to be in the barracks cleaning weapons. they in the barracks in their racks. So that's that was golf company. I get there and I am raising people. Are say, hey, Gunny, you can't be yelling and cursing at people in the hallways like that. I am like, fuck that. No, golf no. company's gone. Yeah. Fuck that yeah, shit. Yeah, we're going to straighten yeah. this out right yeah. now. I get golf company locked on. I go to, uh, God, what's admin called? Conad? Con uh, admin Conad. Or Conad. Mm. Uh, uh, combined admin. I, as the new Marines are coming in, staff sergeants, sergeants, I'm looking at the SRBs and I'm picking, I'm building my. You know, my Baltimore Ravens. I'm oh, building my team. Ladies and gentlemen, SRBs are a service record book. Right. So he's looking at detailed information on individuals. And like he said, he's building his his winning team. My winning. I get golf company locked on. What do they do? They send me to Fox. Oh, oh man. You got to start that whole thing oh, all over oh. again. Yeah. But I love Fox was my heart because that's why I started. So I'm the gunny, but I'm the senior gunny. So I'm doing first sergeant company gunny stuff and duties uh-huh. i'm double duty uh we get this new first sergeant we just butted heads uh but he turned out to be one of my biggest mentors really uh his name was ernest mackins why uh, would you got why were you guys bumping heads because he was he was he was as good as i was if not better mm. uh i mean everyone knows first Sergeant mackins he became sergeant major mackins but uh weight lift white boy blonde haired Blue eyes, never smile. Uh, just people. It's 
because uh, I was a people were afraid of Gunny Marshall. Mm. They were terrified oh, of Mackins, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, First yeah. off, we can't have that. No, you, we you can't gotta get have somebody more you powerful get, you than get, me. You got to get your title back. The Sergeant Major <laughs> was intimidated by Mackins. Tall, oh, tall wow. boy, weightlifter. Wow, wow. But the thing about him was, bro, he would have one piece of paper on his on his desk. His shit was done all the time. Like when things came down, like uh, promotion warrants, uh, pay problems, Mackins would be on it. And it talked, because I, I was more, I wasn't admin strong mm. or like he was. And the thing that was about Mackins, man, because she all these, these yahoos talking about, ah, rah, rah, we're motiv- motivated. But there's times, like I think I told you, we were, I, this one incident, we're in cold weather training up at Bridgeport. Uh, we get caught in a snowstorm, can't wow. get out. Uh. Uh, we're getting low on child, water's frozen. <laughs> and uh, Mackin's the first sergeant, and I'm the company gunner. And I'm the, you know, I'm Uron. Let's get motivated. But you, Mackin's can see that I'm saying motivating, but I ain't motivated. You're not really you know? motivated. Yeah. He would come over to me and look at me. He says, you still motivated, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to confess that it's kind of sucks for right, a sergeant. Right, but, right. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm motivated. He said, all right, just checking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see the, I, see I can the, see it. I see the little yeah. crack in your arm. Bro. I can see you saying, like, fuck this, you know. But uh, and he would do that to me all the time. He was, mm. you know, because anyone can be motivated back in the rear, sun shining, you got, you got chow, yeah. you know. But when you're out there in 29 freaking palms Ooh. or at Bridgeport or we went to jungle war train, warfare training in Panama. Wow. Sucked. It wow. sucked. Uh, and he would always look at me and say, you still motivated, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and he was, that was his way of kind of like, don't be talking yeah, shit if you can't. You. Yeah, poking just like. You. Yeah. And uh, he, he trained me without me realizing it to be a first sergeant. Uh, and then he went to take over weapons company. I, uh, I ended up picking up first sergeant and taking over Foss company. Oh, and wow. so uh, then we compete. I would be that. I would walk down the hallway and kind of like, hey, first off, Max, what's going on? You know, we got my my paperwork turned in already, my promotion <laughs> warrants. <laughs> Max said, yeah, I did that last week. <laughs> <laughs> so he was uh, he that was he was my mentor. It was a good friendly competition. It, it was. And it was. was uh, still sharp and still. It it was. Right. Uh, Mackins was the only person I know smoke a pack of cigarettes. And ran eighteen minute three miles. Bro. Wow! Yeah. I mean, he was and he was a big boy. He must wow. have weighed like two two hundred plus, and smoked like a chimney. Every time you go down there, he's saying, you know, you couldn't smoke in the battalion headquarters, so yeah. he's outside smoking. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it's like, and you know, I'm not gonna ask him. I'm like, first of all, you know, smoking ain't is gonna kill you, bro. Right. He, he outrun me most Whoa, of the time. Wow. So I ain't gonna, yeah. I ain't gonna fuck minutes. with him. Three yeah. miles in 18 minutes. Lord. Yeah, so at Mackins, uh, I got to tell you this other quick story, is uh, Rob Barrows, and then you can ask me any questions you want. Sure. Rob Barrows, when I was in 8th Marines, the Commandant of the Marine Corps was named General Robert Barrows. Uh, I get to, I leave the drill field, and my first platoon commander is Lieutenant Rob Barrows. Didn't put it together, Carlos. I am oh, a little slow. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, Robbie, they called him. He calls himself, he played basketball left-handed. He called himself the Vanilla Thunder. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> you almost made shit, me yeah. right <laughs> I'm like, shut up with you your Vanilla yourself, Thunder. Uh, your, your own mother, <laughs> yeah. you got a problem, man. But he, he, was a, he was a nice guy. He's uh. second lieutenant. He's late to work. It's Monday. We, we, I think we were on the 96, and the captain's on me. Uh, like, what the fuck is Lieutenant Barrows at? You know, so I'll, I'll, I'll get the recall, Ross. I'll check. So I call and uh, this older guy answered the phone, and it, it sounded you can because wherever the he was was in a big place because you can hear it echoing. Right. And like, hey, sir, this is a Sergeant Marshall. I'm, I'm looking for a Lieutenant Barrels. Uh, he's supposed to be here today. The guy on the phone's like, Robbie, it's your platoon sergeant. Get your butt down here. And uh, so he says, Well, I, I have him to the phone in a minute. Everything all right, sir? So, no, sir. He's just, just late to work. So yeah. I, I got it. Yeah, well, I'm fuck him. Right. Yeah. Robbie comes to the phone. He said, Yeah, that was dad. I'm like, Who the fuck is dad? I mean, where are you? He says, Yeah, I'm in the big house. What do you mean the fucking big house? I'm in the commandant's house. <laughs> Your dad wow. is General Robbie Barrels. And he says, Yeah. So I'm talking to the commandant, oh. telling him to, Hey, go, go, go for an go errand. Get your son. <laughs> go get your son. Tell I'm him about to get to his thrash ass. him. <laughs> 
I am talking to the commandant on the phone. Fu- and it's like, wow. and people laughed at me for that for a long time. Wow. But uh, General Barrels, uh, if you know anything about General Barrels, he was at Chosen Reservoir with Chessie Puller. No way. He was a captain. Whoa. Uh, uh, they were trying to get back to the ocean. They had to fight the Chinese, seven divisions of Chinese, or 11 division. Captain Barrels was up in the hills keeping them away from the Marines while the Marines were marching down in the valleys. Look at that. Yeah, uh, and I think he, I forget what award, Navy Cross. I don't think he was a Medal of Honor winner, but General, and they're from Louisiana, so he had that Louisiana. Twang yeah. speech. Hey, yeah. Stash, so I'll go up there and get, <laughs> Robbie, get your ass down here. And if, if you knew Rob Barrels and his dad, just two different personalities, but Rob was, he loved me, uh-huh. and that was, the, that was the thing. He, he was just... He ended up uh, retiring as a major, uh, and uh, it was just it was a it was a good situation for me. So, Carlos, I'm I'm ready for you. I'm I'm so, ready to ask me questions. So, let, what what about Mike? Uh, uh, a major Mike Ator. Mike Etor uh, was. Uh, remember, I told you. I, I told officers uh, you can be commandant, but you can't be a drill instructor. Mm-hmm. Mike Etor was a drill instructor, and went back to college. And came back as a second lieutenant. Another beast. Wow. Yeah. Uh, lieutenant Etor, man. This is second battalion, eighth Marines. He was my platoon commander when we went to Grenada and Beirut. The thing about Mike Etor, Mackins was get it done right away. Etor was about standards. Man, mm. he, was a, he was a drill instructor. He was as hard as I was on. I mean, I would, I would be kind of lenient on the boys. Uh, like, you know, if, if hey, you get it done early, we'll get you out on liberal. E2 wasn't like that, man. Mm. He's like, they're supposed to be here to 1800 or 1700. They're here to 1700. That's right. Uh, we in Beirut, we're, we're on 50% alert for months. Uh, half up, half down. Half mm. up, uh, was it 12? It was, I think it was 12 on, 12 off, 12. Colors, forever. It wasn't no like weekends off, none of that right, good shit, right, bro. Right. And uh, Mike E. Tour was, was on it. And uh, he, he gave me that piece. So by the time, after working with Mike, uh, by the time I became a gunny, uh, I'm not sure what that's called. Just making people, whatever the, it's, you're the same way. I remember Carlos Sardin, Watch Commander Lopez. Are you supposed to be there 15 minutes prior to the gate start, three? To, yeah, oh, yeah. Be there 15 minutes. That was oh, yeah. that was Mike Etor, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, and just, uh, he, he was, uh, you know, he, uh, he, it actually teaches leadership now. Really? He, he, uh, I'll send you. He just uh, sent me a copy of his book. Hmm. He goes through these companies and teach leadership and what leadership means. And, you know, it's about building right. standards. He has three things. I, I wish I can remember them off the top of my head that he talks about. Yeah, being says, being able to build uh, loyalty, loyalty amongst, uh, n- you know, the, the people that you lead and right. them towards you right. and then you towards them. And he talks about discipline. And right. it's not just... In the military, he said, this, this, this formula can work anywhere, Carlos. Hmm, you're uh, right. So, uh, you're right. Um, and it's a and it's, uh, good mentor. Uh, and the last one was this guy named Sergeant Major Kelly. Tim Kelly actually works on Camp Pendleton. He teaches uh, the, the Camp Pendleton DOD police officers. Really? He's an instructor at their school. Uh, oh. so let me tell you about Sergeant Major Call, Kelly. Oh. He's dual cool. Uh, he's a recon. Dual cool means he's oh. scuba and jump qualified. Oh. Uh, he was an instructor at DI school, uh, and there's, there was six gunnies there. Kelly was the – he taught SOP, which you can't choke recruits. You got When you PTM, you can't – you got to give them a, a two-and-a-half-minute and, a and then 30-second break. <laughs> Yeah, okay. right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't recall those standards being applied to me yeah. or, or 1046, you know. <laughs> oh, if it's 90 degrees outside, they can't go out. They got to drink water. They teach you that. Yeah, but. You doing it is another story. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, Kelly was was a beast, man. Kelly, you know what Australian repel is? Repelling Australian? No. Okay, you got regular repelling off a tower this, this tower is 250 feet you go back which you repel like shh. right australian is going off forward it's going oh you, your chest it, chest right. to the ground chest to the ground yeah. and, and you break across your chest instead of your back to your back right and uh, kelly used to teach a repelling class to the high school 
and he would take up the slack because he wanted to jump and be close to the ground before he break. Right. <laughs> so we got the class. Class, the high school is like 70. Hey, so man, that's pretty dangerous, out. man. That's hella dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly put put up too much rope, end up bouncing off the ground. <laughs> 250 feet. <laughs> Wham! Hits the ground in front of the school. And they're thinking like, fuck, we got to do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, broke his leg. I was going to say. Uh, oh, gets up. <laughs> Oh, that's how you do it. And they went crazy. Hobbled back in, and then we took him to the hospital. Big cast. But he, he was a beast. Tim Kelly, man. Uh, and he lived down the street from me, and his kids grew up with my kids. I mean, uh, it was just, that's Tim Kelly. Is that crazy? That's hilarious, Oh, man. man. That's hilarious. He was probably screaming, ah! Yeah. From from the pain. <laughs> Broke his leg, Carlos. That's funny. Uh, um, one last DI school story, sure. and then uh, I think I'm done. Okay, so Carlos, I'm a staff sergeant senior drill instructor. I love these stories. I got them beat them. And uh, mm. I am. I always got to look good in uniform. They go out to what they call Elias Beach when they go out to do field training, learning how to go on the barbed wire and mud and all that kind of good stuff. You know, I, I've been out there for two days. My uniform ain't looking martial like mm. So I, I go, I sneak back in the rear because you your car's out there. Right. The crews don't know that. Right. It takes about 15 minutes to go to back to the barracks, get a fresh uniform, and come back out before the sun comes out. Uh, back in those days, I had a, a Firebird, freaking black on black. I saved my money from Okinawa. Nice. Uh, I had 60 t- rims on it. Uh, I was tinted windows. It was, I used to wash and wax that car every day nice uh so uh i go back i get my uniform on i'm heading back out to where the boards are and uh woo, 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 and peas light me up mm. and i'm like what the fuck and it's paris island ain't nothing going on uh i roll my windows down the stash sergeant comes up to my car and he's like the fuck you doing <laughs> and i'm like i'm stash sergeant too right, right? i'm You're saying fucking talk to me like that yeah right? i'm like hey uh fuck you talking to me i'm like, like why'd you stop me don't be fucking asking me questions. Uh, you know, you, you're you not supposed to be trying speeding or doing a U-turn. I'm like, bro, I, I'm not sure you, you you know what you're talking about. But I didn't, I'm trying to maintain, but I'm in that drill yeah, yeah, mode, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. You don't you fucking you talk fucking to me with. like you, that. You don't know, you know who you're fucking with, man. <laughs> so uh, get out of the car. Oh, I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, I better need, I need to calm down. Right. Right. Otherwise, right. it's just going to go sideways. There's right. no one out there except him and I. Yeah. I get out car and uh, he grabs me by my shoulder and pushes me up against my car. Whoa, bro! I turned around and we were on the ground. Yeah, yeah, we on the ground. Uh, his flashlight goes. You know, he gets on the radio. You know, whatever. Help! Help! <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm in handcuffs and they take me to NP. Now I, I'm thinking in my head. You know, rubbly goes in like a half an hour. You got to get this over with. Come on, yeah. Now. Let's yeah. do what you got to do. Write me up. Let me get out of here. Right. So they keep me. Believe it or not, I got out of there in enough time to go and take care of the recruit. Right. Uh, didn't tell anyone. They didn't call the OD. So oh, it was no just, shit. yeah, yeah. They kept it under, uh, under the car. It was, hey, nothing, nothing. Yeah, even the serious commander. No one knew about it. Uh, I'll tell you how things, how God works, Lopez. So now I'm a gunny at DI school. Uh, I'm the PT instructor. Mm. Uh, and this is years, years later. Uh, Bigger than shit, who's checking into DI school as a staff sergeant? Oh, the the individual that pulled you over. Yeah, we are, because they have a two way mirror at DI school, so you can look at the new students come Uh, in. I'm like, oh, that guy looks familiar. Is that right? Yes, I I go to the SRBs, because I I didn't know his name. But you look at him when he was was in Paris. And I'm like, MP, Paris Island during that time. Yeah. So I switched to SRB so he was in my squad. Oh, payback time, <laughs> Payback <baby>. time. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if he recognized me oh. or whatever, because oh. I had gone to the fleet and I came back. Uh-huh. And now I'm a gunny. Bro, uh, he could not move without me being in his ass. We battled PT. I would run next to him and be on his ass. <laughs> get the fuck off there. Hurry up. Get up. Come on, get up. You, know, you can't be any louder than that. You want to be a drone instructor? <laughs> Every time uh, uniform inspections, they come back across the street after uh, PT. You have to be dressed in 20 minutes after PT. Ooh. 
Ooh. It had to be inspection ready dress. Hey, that is tough. That's that twenty that, that minutes. Showered, showered, shaved, uniform, you, you brush everything. your fangs, and then and then get the uniform on, guys. It's right. not like you're putting on a right. pair of blue jeans. No, you have to make Gig sure line. your uniform yeah. is impeccable. Yeah. I would go. Dead shoes <laughs> squared away, bell buckle polished, everything. Ooh. Carlos, they be in formation. I walk straight to it. I didn't understand. <laughs> I would go by it. the whole formation, go straight to him and find something wrong. I, I, I used to pick at his ribbon till I get an Irish pennant. I know. He was like, why <laughs> me? Why the fuck you? Why me? Bro, he, uh, <laughs> You call it DOR. You can drop on request. Ah. He was out of it in two weeks. Oh, yeah. is that and it, right? And, it, and he's checking out. I'm like, you know, Stats, I'm, I'm sorry this happened to you. I, you know, A1 can't be a drone instructor. And uh, <laughs> to this, and I, I didn't mention that, that incident, incident at all. Yeah. yeah. You think uh, he wrote, you think he, he, he connected? I think he did eventually, ah, you know, because yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I still look the same. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he was gone. He was, he's hey. A, He's and he ended up this. going back to Paris Island to the MP, and okay. he picked up Gunny eventually. Okay, uh, so it, it was just a, a funny kind of hey man, karma man. But you, it karma. Thank you. Perfect yes. word for yeah. it. Perfect word for it. Yeah. <clears throat> now, when did you get out the Marine Corps? What year? Uh, ninety eight. Ninety eight. Now, shortly thereafter, you you end up becoming a LAPD officer. LAPD. Officer. Uh, would you like to tell us some stories about that? Now, first of all, real quick. So you guys have to go through uh, an academy. Right. Uh, how long was that academy? LAPD Academy. The whole process from day one until you're done with probation is two years. I mean, unlike the DOD Academy, LAP, the LAPD Academy is where I learned to be a police officer. Carlos. Hmm. It is no joke. I went there. I'm in charge of 300 Marines as a first sergeant. I go to LAPD Academy. They call you boot. Hmm. Uh, I got this little female in front of me. Come here, boot. You don't know nothing what it's like on the street. You know, you you think you know shit. They don't know my background. Right. I was in the Marine Corps. They knew I was older. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, get in for me. And, and you're in suit and tie. Mm. And you got a little briefcase. So you like a little FBI. Mike, yeah. Mike. <clears throat> see, I, I'm going to cut you off real quick. Yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> that's where I would have a problem. It, because me and you, I mean, obviously, you are much right. older than me. Right, but right. having a young... Uh, officer, a police officer, or, or you know whatever you want to call them, right, right, uh, and you be back in the position of a recruit with somebody screaming in your face, I would, I'd be, I'd be. I'd be in handcuffs because yeah. I'd be uppercutting yeah. motherfuckers yeah. in them. I'd be like, man, yeah. who the fuck you yeah. think? You know what? Fire me right now. As a matter of fact, let me shove this fucking boot down your throat. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't do it. But How you, did you do it? You got to want to be a police. I, I really, LAPD is the premier police department. It is the uh, uh, when you think of SWAT, that's LAPD invented that. Uh, Daryl Gates. Is it Daryl Gates? I uh, forget the chief of police, but his last name was Gates. Uh, I mean, all all these technology, the armored cars that all the police departments mm-hmm. in the country, that's all LAPD shit. They mm. were doing that shit years before the, you know, tactical combat gear, yeah. uh, vests. Yeah. That's all LAPD. Now, do yeah. you, you, you feel your military experience as a Marine uh, – Helped you once they find out who I was, they made me the class leader. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, my class looked like a recruit platoon. Ooh. They were doing, they were marching. I sized them up, uh, according to according to the, the height, the height, left face, <laughs> dropping, yeah, you know, yeah. just right, dressed. Mm-hmm. And uh, my advisor was a, a Marine also, he didn't retire, but he was, I think he was in the Marine Corps for like 10 years. So mm. I think he was like a staff sergeant gunny when he got out, right? And uh, I was like an instructor there. Uh, it was just LAPD is just um, it was a good experience for me um, I ended up going to they call there's 18 divisions in, in LA and what's great about LA is so big it's like the Marine Corps if you don't get along with someone at a, a certain division a particular you, department or you division. can go to another division another division yeah, yeah. and uh, I work <clears throat> South Central uh, there's the 110 freeway uh, you got Rampart which is up Midtown LA, you got Newton. Newton Division is called Shooting Newton. Mm. Uh, you got Newton Division, and you got 77th, and you got, I think it's Southeast. But that's all the hood. That is all the hood. And I and uh, I did well in the academy. I got to choose where I wanted to go. Wow. I didn't want to go to Hollywood. Uh, I didn't want to go. You wanted to get the thickest. I wanted to go you want gunslinger. To get in, you you yeah. want to get dirty. Yeah. I wanted to get dirty. And I, Carlos, I love that job. I got in trouble. I was just too, too. 
I, I didn't need it time to process the Marine Corps out of my system. Oh, so you still had the the oh, yeah. aggressive rep when I joined. O.J. Simpson had just happened a couple of years earlier. There was something called uh, Rafael Perez, who was this. Uh, they think he had something to do with Tupac's killing. Yeah, right. But he was a gangster cop. He was yeah. taking okay. Yeah, he was taking dope from uh, dealers. And he was selling selling it back. He wouldn't turn it in. There was a lot of corruption wow. going on in L.A. at the time. Yeah, yeah. So they, what they were doing is putting complaint forms at the station. So any, you had any problem with any LAPD cop, you can go to the station, get a uh, complaint form, and write it up. I was getting complaints like three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, I was just... Tell I, me some stories, some exciting stories. Uh, one of my greatest stories. Uh, so I had a female training officer her name was florence telemontes they called her flo flo was rough man flo had like a high and tight you know she was uh, mm, oh, yeah, yeah. uh okay <laughs> uh but she was a good cop she had like two uh-huh. shootings man she killed one girl for reaching for a purse one time in her car wow and she was still working so we were cruising and we work night shift they rotate you as a new cop as a rookie cop you work days for so many months then you work swings then you work Night. How so? This is this uh, female. She's your training officer. She's right? my F- FTO. And she's your field training officer. Right. How long was that for? Uh, I work with Flow for like three months. Okay. Yeah, and by the time you work nights, they have to feel comfortable with you. By I leaving, mean, you, you don't, don't by yourself, off. right? Yeah, and and even so, they would still probably shadow you. They shadow, and, yeah. and you know, and LA is two man two man units, so oh. it's always. Two people in the car. It's, okay. Uh, singles are usually uh, the dope guys, the uh, guys looking for abandoned cars and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And the, the supervisors are in singer cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they call them king units. I forget what they call them. But uh, so I, I'm with Flo. We're cruising around. And Flo is just mean, Carlos. She was just, <laughs> she, it's like, <laughs> Flo, come on, man. Yeah, do something mm. uh, to be nice. Go out, get drink beer. Smell flowers. Smell flowers. <laughs> So we're cruising around South Central, and uh, there's this big black guy at the Exxon station on Florence and Broadway. I remember it right on the corner. And there's not a lot of people out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I noticed a guy. And be- being a rookie cop, they have all these bolos mm-hmm. be on the lookout yeah, look for. for. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, and I used to keep them in my little, remember the little epoxy boxes, oh, the yeah. little metal boxes? Oh, yeah. And uh, and uh, I used to look at them every day, and big and shit, Carlos, in the in the bolo, the guy had his hair blown out like a big afro. Afro, yeah. The guy standing at the Exxon station had cornrows, but it was the same guy. I, right. You know, to Telemontes, all black people look the same. <laughs> I can tell the difference. <laughs> and I'm like, Flo, uh, and I pulled the bolo out. Uh, I was driving. I said, that's this that's guy him. right there. Yeah. She's like, Marsh, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Shut up. <laughs> and uh, so we rode down the road. I'm like, Flo, that's him. He said, okay, I'm going to prove to you. You don't know it. Because she thought I was uh, cocky. Yeah, yeah, I thought I was a little cocky. Yeah. I'm a Marine first right. son. And, you know, sir, pull up behind him. Carlos, this guy's huge, bro. He's like Shaquille O'Neal huge. Mm. Uh, Flo don't even get out of the car. She stays in the car, and she's fucking around with the MDT, the computer, yeah. running the plates. Right. So I walk up to the brother. <laughs> and my heart, I'm a combat veteran. <laughs> That shit don't mean shit out there. Uh, I walk up to the guy, hey, sir, um, we ran your plates on your car, and there's something wrong with your car. I know you probably have all the paperwork on it, but there's a problem with the car. He's like, what's wrong with my car? I was like, you know, I'm not sure. We'll right. find we'll out. We'll find out. But we need to check into it. Can I see your driver's license? Yeah. Gives me his real driver's license with uh-huh. his real name on it. Right. It, same name is on the on bolo. bolo. Uh-huh. This guy's a uh, FBI Top ten most wanted for armed robbery and murder. Whoa! And uh, so I, I'm like, sir, um, for your safety and my safety, I need you to just turn around. Let me handcuff you. We'll figure this out real quickly, and you'll be on your way. And I promise, if there's any problems, you know, we'll write. You know, if you're late to somewhere, right. I am being. You're as trying nice to be as, as cordial as Not possible because you ask him because you don't want to spike this right, guy's right. temper up because uh in in the bolo it says you know uh dangerous dangerous right. weapons yeah, you know, all yeah this, the you know. temper uh, yeah uh-huh the, the the guy is so big carlos he cannot he can't get his legs he has to lay across the back seat of the car wow. and this is a crown vic wow uh so he's he's all scrunched in there and bigger than shit they have a code when you run somebody's information over mm. the radio yeah. if he's a uh, uh, risk 
it wants, if he comes up hot, right? Uh, they don't say it. It's yeah. a code that comes on the computer. Because right. if they hear they, it, they don't want he's gone. him. They don't want him to hear Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So we get back to the station, and uh, first of all, handcuffs. I couldn't get my handcuffs around his wrist, Carlos. What? Oh. I had to double cuff him. I, I had to like clamp yeah, down. They probably the got the one teeth. <laughs> the they got the one teeth. teeth yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to double cuff him because his his arms it was he was so back. his chest was the oh, girth. Oh my! I can God. imagine. Oh, wow. So we get the brother back, and now he knows what's going on. But wow. then we got ten police. Oh yeah, no, he sees that coming. He's like, oh yeah, oh, they got me, fuckers, y'all. Yeah, yeah, they got, I got they y'all found out. He gave me this death look, like next time I see you, motherfucker. Hey, ass but you know by. what though? I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Uh, and 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 doing that job, the most effective. Uh, weapon you have or, or or defense you have is is your mouth absolutely you w- talk them there. into the cuffs now imagine if it would have been a situation where all of a sudden there's two or three units close by and they come up and he's not in cuffs he's gonna be fighting hey and i, I fought those guys in la man uh that would have been a fight you, that guy would have to have been shot, Carlos. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just oh. on, based off his size and he, strength. He was just, and uh, he would have beat Flo Telemontes in my ass. By the time the, everyone, the posse got probably, there. Listen, because <laughs> you and I, were, we're short. Yeah. He probably would have picked you up and, and beat her with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's just, uh, and, and Flo, yeah, Flo was kind of heavy saying it. We, we went to this burglary in progress. We had to jump over the back fence. Flo couldn't get her fat ass over the fence. I am like, come on. And, uh, you know, because I'm thinking we're going to have to fight. What you I kept hearing her slip like, on the fence. Like, She's like, go ahead, go ahead. I ain't, I'm like, come on, Mike, man. You my FTO. Mike, Mike, Mike what you say? Oh, great, jump on my back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But uh, uh, the thing you write about L.A., man, I don't, cops, cops join the police department for different reasons. I think of people like Henson. You got these guys. You got these pe- poor people in L.A. They got these guys pushing these shopping carts to have Mexican beans and rice and, you know, uh, Mexican tamales. Tamales. Or, uh, and they're oranges. just selling them, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, yeah. They, it, it, no technically, freaking, it's illegal. It's illegal, but, but it's, it's they're nothing. Trying, they're trying to survive. It's trying to survive. My FTO, Canales. You would think Canales would be a little more sensitive. Uh, oh, yeah. no. He was one of those, huh? Oh, he used to see these people and just dump everything That's some street. fucked up shit. And I'm like, with all the shit going on in L.A., That's some why fucked are you fucking up with shit. these? Why, yeah, and and that, that part of policing was, was I, I didn't like it all. It's just a power trip for a lot of these guys. I agree. You know, yeah. I it's Mike, <clears throat> Mike, it's one thing. For, okay, you want to you wanna hold... Uh, the law to that side. Uh, uh, right. Okay, look, go to them. Hey, look, I'm not going to cite you, but you got to go. Right. But don't dump their. I mean, these people, they pay right. money for right. this. And, you know, Canals, you, you don't know where they, they make that shit in the bathtub, so it's unsanitary. Well, people that buy it uh, know that. Right. You know, so they're that's taking. That's the risk they yeah, take. Yeah, that's the risk that they're right. taking. And, yeah. you know, and. And these people, you can tell they have nothing. This is all they have. That's what I'm saying. You know, you They've know, invested all their money into this one thing, and you're just going to dump it? Yeah. Carlos, uh, you, you talk about talking. I, and because I was older, I didn't. I had nothing to prove. I, mm. I, I love being a police officer, but I didn't have to prove my manliness or my bad, you know, I'm I, a macho. You know, I love uh, that about being up in age and having so much experience under right, your belt right. that when you and it's funny man because a lot of people post these different things and one of them is like you know I'm to the point in my life where really nothing impresses me no you know no, what I mean no. yeah. we talked about this before these guys they have all these combat medals like Medal of Honor Navy Cross when you meet these guys they're like the most humble people you've ever met humble they, man you have to pull it out of them say yeah. I didn't know like Jeremiah Denton mm-hmm I'm looking at his record with, you know, Navy Cross, Silver Stars, Bronze Stars. You would have never known that. This guy was quiet, Carlos. Like I say, he never looked you in the eye. He was very, uh, uh, and the things he had been through, you would think he would be like a beast, but he was totally the opposite. If you saw him in Walmart in civilian clothes, you would it, it'd be just like another old man. You know, the, the funny thing is yeah. that, uh, do you listen to uh, Jocko podcast? No. Jocko Podcast is a former Navy SEAL, and right. uh, I'm just listening. I heard of him. Yeah, yeah I just uh, I'm listening to his uh, 
episode 207 with uh, the Medal of Honor winner Kyle Carpenter. Marine and no Kyle Carpenter. Yeah, right, man, you right, know, right. And, mm-hmm. and Kyle Carpenter is so humble. Humble. Have you met him? I've never met him. But they say he's on Pendleton a lot. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be a pleasure to meet him, right. man. This guy's very humble. You know, he's, uh, he's five foot six. Our size, <laughs> one of us. <laughs> but I noticed yeah. that about individuals with a lot of metal medals, uh, particularly combat action right. ribbon, purple hearts, uh, you know, uh, valor, uh, silver stars, bronze stars. Very humble people. Very humble. You know. Uh, Carlos, one one uh, last Marine Corps story. I have to tell you this story. Uh, so, and it's not it's not it's not like combat killing. Uh, I get up. It's a it's a pissing story again. Hmm. I'm on ship. The ship is rocking back and forth. I think we've just left Grenada. We're going off to Beirut now. And uh, you know those ships have those big heavy freaking doors you gotta wrench down and mm-hmm. open up. Open them up. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh I'm I'm in the staff and CO quarters, which is on the same level as the officers' quarters. But at some point the tile on the floor changes colors, but it's middle of the night. I'm in skivvies, I'm going to freaking piss. And the ship is rocking. I open the door, and somehow it's just slipped out of my hand, and it's slammed up against the bulkhead, right? Oh, man. Wow. Big-ass noise. I didn't hear any. You know, I didn't pay any attention. I right. go and piss. I'm coming back. As I, as I open the door, there's this person standing there in his skivvies, and he is obviously livid. And he's like, well, that fucking you that just come through there slamming the door? You know, I'm stash sergeant, former drone stalker. Right. Like, uh, it was... And I'm sorry, uh, but you don't have to the fucking fuck talk. Talking to? <laughs> who the fuck are you talking to? <laughs> Bro, we getting ready to get it on right there at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'll skip it. I'll fucking see you in the morning. Well, fuck, fuck I'll we, we see right you here. in the morning. Yeah. We right here, motherfucker. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Go put on your fucking flip-flops and let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Next morning, your formation's on the flight deck. Uh, I'm up there in front of my little platoon, and I see this Cobra pilot captain coming towards me. And... Motherfuck, it's the same guy I ran into last <laughs> last night. <laughs> uh, he's the same rank as my commanding officer, my company commander. And I see him talking to him. He's like waving my company commander to come over to him. Yeah. And he's pointing to me like that little motherfucker. <laughs> I see my company commander and this Mike E. Tour uh, talking to him and never heard anything about it. Done. Just kind of went away. I love the Marine Corps, man. Wow. Uh, it turns out this guy was a Navy Academy graduate, Cobra pilot, thought his shit did. None of the officers liked him. Uh, I didn't know that. But I, and, uh, and they said, Mike, thank God you didn't put your hands on this guy. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know his rank or anything. Yeah, I didn't know it yeah. was in the officer course. But right, right. It's like, get another fucking rack. Don't have a yeah. rack up against the bulk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was just. Uh, wow. Me well, and him, we get ready to throw down, Carlos. I hear you. Yeah. Well, Mike, listen, it's been a pleasure. Is there anything else you'd like to, no, to I say just, before uh, we if I got out? any of the stories incorrect to my Marine buddies and my family, you know, it's, I'm 67 years old, so just be easy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, listen, uh, yeah. once again, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I hold you in high respect Thank and you. high regard. And, and congratulations uh, to you and your new ventures thank you sir i I appreciate that and uh ladies and gentlemen this has been chapter 66 a part two with first sergeant mike marshall ladies and gentlemen oh freaking rod oh rod you guys take care comment like subscribe peace we are out peace out dj architect architect